Welcome, everybody, to the NFL Week in Review show on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. I'm your host, Mike Goodpastor. We're going to look back at week eight. Had a lot of interesting things happen over this last week, as the NFL does. Everything changes week to week. We're going to look at if the Miami Dolphins are actually Super Bowl contenders. We're going to look at a Pittsburgh Steelers team that has been decimated by injuries. An Indianapolis Colts team, who I still think needs a head coach. We're going to look at could a wide receiver win NFL MVP. Is Jordan Love a bust? Is Will Levis the man in Tennessee from here on out? The battle for New Jersey, which was a very sad event for everybody that lives in New Jersey. Are the 49ers in trouble? And we're going to start off with, are the Cincinnati Bengals about to take off? Now, real quick before we get to this, you're watching on Rumble, probably watching on YouTube. Make sure you click on the link in the description down below to check out BetMGM on YouTube for the best bet to bet all of your NFL and college football games. Make sure you follow me, Mike Goodpastor, at Grilling Truth. But let's go ahead. Let's look at what happened yesterday in the NFL. And a lot of interesting things went down, as they always do. The Cincinnati Bengals, who started yesterday at 3-3, three and three, last place in the AFC North, looked in trouble. All the AFC North teams won last week. The Cleveland Browns look legit. The Ravens look legit. The Steelers look legit. Those things kind of took a turn for the worse yesterday, at least for the Browns and for the Steelers. We'll check that out in a little bit. The Bengals had the calf injury to Joe Burrow. He started out the year. All they could do was dink and dunk. He couldn't move. He couldn't extend the pocket. He couldn't throw the ball deep down the field. Huge issues for the Cincinnati Bengals. Defensively, they looked out of sorts. If you remember last year, Jesse Bates, Von Bell, both gone. The Cincinnati Bengals used their first-round draft pick on Miles Murphy, who has been a complete and utter bust, as I predicted on this show earlier in the year. But a healthy Joe Burrow is the best quarterback in the NFL. And Jamar Chase may be the best wide receiver. If not the best, he's definitely in the top three or four. Joe Mix has been running the ball well. The offensive line has improved, and they proved it yesterday. They took a couple sacks against the 49ers, but the 49ers are going to get a couple sacks starting the game out no matter what. You've got one of the best defensive lines in football. You've got one of the best defenses in football. And as little as three weeks ago, most people thought this 49er team was the best team in football. They had a double-digit win streak at home in San Francisco. Hard to beat there. But things changed. The Bengals had a bye week, so Burrow had two more weeks off. He looked decent. He looked better against Seattle two weeks ago. But when Joe Burrow was on, with the weapons this team has, you know, Joe Mixon in the backfield, even Travion Henderson in the backfield, Chase Brown, even though he's hurt right now, you got Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd made some big plays. We actually saw some T. Higgins sightings. If T. Higgins could get in gear, this Bengal team is going to be very dangerous. On the defensive side, you've got Lou Anarumo as the defensive coordinator, and this defense has stepped up quickly. You know, second-round pick Jordan Battle has is now competing for playing time. And when you look at that, you've got Logan Wilson, who may be the best, one of the top five linebackers in football right now. The guy's an absolute monster. If he played in New York, everybody would have heard about him. But in Cincinnati, maybe not so much. So when you look at this Bengals team, the AOC North is stacked, but it looks like Deshaun Watson this may never be Deshaun Watson again. He's got his shoulder injury now. And the Pittsburgh Steelers still have question marks at quarterback. Plus now, as we'll talk about a little bit, they're kind of decimated by injuries after yesterday's game. So that leaves you with the Ravens and the Bengals. And for my money right now, the Bengals and the Ravens are the two best teams in the AFC North, or in the AFC, maybe in the NFL. Because when you look at it, both are well coached. Lamar Jackson is the quarterback. Joe Burrow is the quarterback. They're the top two guys in the NFL, I believe, when healthy. Because what we've seen from Lamar Jackson is when he stands in the pocket and throws the ball and just runs when he has to, or when you get down by the goal line or third and two, he becomes a much more productive quarterback. I think they actually dumbed down Lamar Jackson's ability to play football in Baltimore by wanting to just emphasize him running the ball and handing the ball off. So are the Cincinnati Bengals about to take off? I don't think there's any doubt they're about to take off. And Sunday night, the whole world will have no doubt about that as they battled the Buffalo Bills at Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati. You're going to have a raucous crowd. And, I mean, we saw it last year. The Bengals controlled the game early before the DeMar Hamlin situation. And then in the playoffs, in the snow, in Bills weather, the Bengals dominated the Bills 27-10. to 10. The Cincinnati Bengals are basically built 
to beat the Buffalo Bills. And we're going to see that Sunday night. And that's going to run this team to five and three. And I would say for everybody in the NFL, look out because Joe Burrow is coming. And it's going to be hard to stop Joe Burrow if he stays healthy. The Cincinnati Bengals are going to go to the Super Bowl. Now, when we look at the San Francisco 49ers, are they in trouble? I don't think they're in trouble. I think the trouble comes from Trent Williams, their left tackle being hurt, Debo Samuel being out and hurt. What I saw from Brock Purdy yesterday is he made two horrific mistakes, really bad interceptions. But outside of that, Brock Purdy played well yesterday. He's just not Joe Burrow. But you get Christian McCaffrey who could run the ball. They've got a solid offensive line. They've got a really good defense. They've got good coaching. The San Francisco 49ers will get this ship righted. If you remember last year, they didn't really take off until the last half of the season. I expect they'll do that again. They're going to win the NFC West. And I think really in the NFC, there's three or four teams that can win it all. And the San Francisco 49ers are one of them. So they're in a little bit of trouble. But as soon as they get Samuel and they get Trent Williams back, and everything just kind of calms down. Right now, three-game losing streak. The next game for them is huge. I think the 49ers will be fine. The battle for New Jersey. I say New Jersey because they're not New York teams because that stadium is in New Jersey. You had the Giants and the Jets. And it started off with Tyrod Taylor against you know Zach Wilson. If you want to get even worse, Tyrod Taylor gets hurt. Mike DeVito comes in to play quarterback for the New York Giants. And the Giants and Jets game was a poorly played, poorly coached game, as bad as you could get all around. Now, to make matters even more more mind-blowing for the Jets is they almost lost to Tommy DeVito. And if they get that field goal, they probably win the game. Can you get a worse quarterback matchup in NFL history than Tommy DeVito against Zach Wilson? The coaching was bad. Everything was bad. And neither one of these teams have a shot at the playoffs right now. I will put a caveat. If Aaron Rodgers somehow comes back in the next three or four weeks, which I highly doubt, then the Jets could make the playoffs. They're a good, hard-nosed, well-coached football team. I think the Giants have a better shot right now at landing the number one pick than they do ending up in the playoffs. The Daniel Jones contract was atrocious. Now he's hurt. Tyrod Taylor is hurt. Is Mike DeVito really going to quarterback this team the rest of the season? I highly doubt that. I'm sure one of those guys will come back healthy. But can you afford to roll with Mike DeVito even another game or two? Next up, the Indianapolis Colts. This is a situation with Shane Stetchen. I'm sorry, but Jonathan Taylor ran the ball really well in the first half yesterday. What are you thinking to come out and only giving the ball a couple times in the second half? The Indianapolis Colts paid a lot of money for some offensive linemen. They've got Jonathan Taylor, who they paid a lot of money. You've got Gardner Minshew, who was a turnover waiting to happen. Let Gardner Minshew go in, be a game manager, hand the ball off, occasionally throw it. Let your defense play, let your running backs play, and try to win the game. This is the same Shane Session who got his number one pick, Anthony Richardson, hurt because they want to run a bunch of design runs for him because he's not actually an NFL-quality quarterback at this point in time. So they didn't help his development by doing that. You really got to question a lot of things you see that happens with the Indianapolis Colts. Next up, Will Levis. Is he the man in Tennessee from here on out? You got Ryan Tannehill hurt when he comes back. Do you even want to play him after yesterday? Will Levis had one of the great first starts in NFL history. You know, he displayed a strong arm. You know, three touchdown passes that traveled 20 or more yards. He used pump fakes to move defenders out of position and open passing lanes. And Tennessee wide receivers came alive under Levis. Entering this game, they had three total touchdown receptions on the season. They had four on Sunday. At least Levis has earned himself an opportunity to start against the Pittsburgh Steelers' aggressive defense. And I think that game will show us exactly what we need to know about Levis. Now, Ryan Tannehill, it also gives him extra time to recover from a right high ankle sprain that he sustained earlier in the season. If Levis plays well again against the Steelers, that may signal the end of the Tannehill era in Tennessee and the start of the Will Levis era. And I was one that I didn't think Will Levis would be this good. Now, what I was right on, though, is Jordan Love. Jordan Love, to me, looks like a complete and utter bust right now. He played well the first few games, maybe the first three games of the season. And it looked like maybe the Packers had their quarterback in the future. 
Unfortunately, since Love has proven himself less than reliable as he has missed open receivers, ran on third down when there was no hope at conversion, you know, throws interceptions. He's thrown eight in five games. Love is in way over his head. And the Packers' season has all been over. Love is just not the guy in Green Bay. And it really makes you wonder if Coach LaFleur is the guy in Green Bay, too. Maybe a complete rebuild is needed in Packer land. Next up, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well-coached team. Decimated by injuries right now. They've started the year out pretty strong. They had a big win against the Rams last week. But they laid an egg against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Safety, safety Minka Fitzpatrick was taken out with a hamstring injury midway through the first quarter. Qu quarterback Kenny Pickett left 17 seconds before halftime with a rib injury. Deontay Johnson limped into the blue injury tent following Green George Pickett's 22-yard touchdown reception. In the subsequent series, left tackle Dan Moore Jr. briefly exited with knee discomfort. And without Fitzpatrick as the top tackler, this team gave up a 56-yard touchdown reception to Travis Etienne Jr., but still forced three turnovers. The Steelers' biggest issue coming up is playing on Thursday night. This short week could doom their chances against the Tennessee Titans, especially if Will Levis is the real deal. Without Minka Fitzpatrick, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be in some trouble. Now, here's the question. All right. We always argue this on the NFL show, the NFL betting show, NFL pick'em show. You can see Wednesday nights at 7 with myself, Dan Kornhauser, and Steve Risley. <clears throat> and... I always say NFL MVP means nothing. And the reason I say that is it almost invariably goes to a quarterback. You'll get the occasional Adrian Peterson. My question is, is A.J. Brown right now the NFL MVP? He became the first player in NFL history to record 125 or more receiving yards in six consecutive games since the merger. He shattered a post-merger record held by Calvin Johnson. Brown has made life easier for quarterback Jalen Hurts. Both touchdown catches against Washington were close calls. This gives Brown 12 touchdown catches with throws of 15 yards or further since last season. So more than any other NFL receiver in that period of time. Now I know MVP is just a quarterback award, but if Brown continues on their pa this pace, this season could be an exception. <clears throat> now finally, guys, we're going to look at the Miami Dolphins. Are the Miami Dolphins a serious Super Bowl contender? <clears throat> a lot of that may be answered against Kansas City coming up in the next week. But the Dolphins were down four starters during this last game. Teron Armstead, Isaiah Wynn, Connor Williams. You know, Williams was active due to a groin injury. But Robert Hunt left due to a hamstring strain. To make matters worse, backup left tackle Kendall Hunt Lamb briefly left with an abdominal injury but returned later in the second half. Though the loss is significant, Armstead should return for next week's matchup against the Chiefs, while Williams should be healthy enough to contribute also. My question here is, the Dolphins are a contender, but the offensive line wasn't great before, and now it's banged up. The defense, to me, is below average. So I really think this. I think the Miami Dolphins will probably make the playoffs. I don't think they're a Super Bowl contender. I don't think I could see them beating the Bengals or the Ravens or even the Chiefs in a big, big spot just because the Bengals, Ravens, and Chiefs have a lot better defense than the Miami Dolphins do. All right, guys, that was my take for Week 8 NFL Week in Review. Make sure you follow me at Grueling Truth. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell notification at YouTube. Follow us on Rumble. We just got on there. You can hear all of our shows on Spotify and iHeartRadio. But for now, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been watching and listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.